Hey guys, it's Bloom, and I'm bringing you a beginner-friendly Templar healer build video for normal and veteran dungeons as well as your first trials. Please look at the upload date of this video and keep in mind that Ezo is an ever-changing MMO, so if you watch this in the distant future, it could be that some things are not up to date anymore. But the basic rules for healing in this game will probably never change, so it can still be a good idea to keep on watching even then. But what are the basics of being a good healer in Ezo? Different than in some other games, you don't distinguish between a classic healing and a classic support role. You need to be both at the same time. You can imagine it as two pillars that stabilize a big roof. The roof symbolizes the group's DPS. The more you have, the faster the fight will end. And faster fights will mean easier resource management, which means keeping up with your magicka, stamina and health. Plus, you will have less time to do mistakes and a lot of mechanics will be skippable if you nuke down the enemies fast enough. So the more DPS your group does, the merrier. The first pillar symbolizes healing. Simplified, there are three different healing scenarios. First is the easiest. No to almost no damage coming in. During that time you should make sure to keep your HOTs active and reapply everything you need. HOT stands for Healing Over Time Abilities. An example for that would be Rapid Regen or the Ritual of Retribution. Your HOTs help to sustain your members' life efficiently and make sure they always max out. Because HOTs basically work by themselves and are inexpensive, you should make sure to always keep at least one on your friends active. Generally speaking, you don't want to use active healing abilities when it is not really needed. The second scenario describes medium incoming damage that often hits in impulses, so-called ticks. This kind of damage will often affect the whole group or several people at once. For this situation, there is one skill that fits perfectly. Healing Springs. These are very cheap and can be stacked well, so it is perfect as a spam ability. An important rule is to always heal simultaneously to incoming damage. Because the maximum health of your damage dealers is rather low, you cannot wait with healing after all damage is done, because when they get the next hit, they will be dead already. So always heal during the incoming damage. The last scenario describes big massive hits that take away almost all HP or at least huge chunks of it. But don't be scared, this mostly only happens to one or few members, so you will be able to handle it. In general, all damage that cannot be avoided is able to being healed. There should never be a point where you should feel like giving up and not being able to handle it anymore. And if there is, just write me and we will figure out why that is. So for these massive hits, you have your lovely oh shit heal called Breath of Life. This ability is rather expensive, but very strong as well. This will only really heal the person in front of you with the least health, or yourself if you have the least health. And this has no healing over time component, so you should only use it sparingly when needed. The second pillar symbolizes support. But what does that even mean? As a healer, you will have a lot of time in between having to actively heal your members, especially when you got to know the mechanics of your fight already. So, during that time, it is your task to help your group dealing more damage and sustaining and managing their resources. You do that by applying buffs to your allies, debuffs to your enemies and providing synergies. If it is possible, always talk to your group members how they would like you to help them or check yourself if you have mixed TDs or maybe only Magicka or any, only Stamina. Change your setup accordingly. The relation between you and your tank should always be very communicative as well. Of course, this only really is possible when playing with your friends and not randoms. I will list you the classic support skills later in the video. Synergies are bonus effects of your skills that can be activated by your group members. This can mean, for example, additional healing or damage or regaining some of magicka or stamina. But another important reason to provide enough synergies is Alkosh. This is a set most tanks wear and when they use a synergy, the enemies will get debuffed and your DDs can deal more damage to them. Plus. There is a passive in the Undaunted skill line that will grant additional resources when activating a synergy and everybody normally uses that passive. Q 
Keeping track of providing synergies can be a lot to handle at the start, but it is really important to learn it early since it is one of the most important things a healer has to do. Now after you got to know the basics of healing in Ezo, I will talk a little bit about basics of your character. In this video I'm talking about Templars, but there are other classes that you can heal with too. The Templar is the most common all-rounder that finds a spot in every group and can fit into every situation. It pumps out healing like crazy and is very beginner friendly. The second most common would be the Warden, which is a little more advanced, doesn't do that much healing per second but can provide a lot of synergies and has a very good magicka management. An even more advanced class for top groups is the Sorcerer. At the moment, because Sorcerer GDs don't do as much damage as other classes, you try to take one Templar and one Sword Killer so you don't have to bring a Sorcerer DD. To optimize the group lineup, you will need one Sorg in the group for a specific buff and a specific synergy. In general, the trend goes towards outsourcing every set or skill onto the healers that help the group do more DPS, but would mean less DPS if a tank or DD would wear it. So for example, healers starting wearing typical tank sets, so the tanks can do a bit DPS by themselves, or wear sets that debuff the enemies even more. Or healers can wear sets that back in the day stamina DDs wore. Because most of the times when you wear a support set, you do a little bit less DPS yourself, but the group does more because of you. So you see, strategies are getting more and more creative these days. Anyways, you can heal with every class, but some are more efficient than others. Decide for yourself what you want to do in this game and how you want to enjoy it. If you don't want to play what others play, don't do it and find your own playstyle. With healing you have more freedom as on other roles and you can weigh out a lot with your own skill. As long as you and your group are happy with your performance, everything is more than fine. It is important to understand that being a healer comes with a lot of responsibility and the other people rely on you. So please find the balance between not giving a fluff and doing your own thing and pleasing everyone. For races goes the same thing. You can make everything work, but here are my recommendations. Breton is the most efficient and overall best choice and I would recommend it to beginners and advanced players. They have a lot of benefits sustaining their magicka and nothing is worse than being out of mana and not being able to heal at all anymore. Having a good build in magicka management means you don't have to use so many enchantments to increase it and thus you can use those enchantments to make your healing a lot stronger instead. But other good races are Agonians, High Elves and even Khajiit and Nord. But as I said, choose what you like, your race will not at all determine whether you're a good or a bad healer. Nothing is really unplayable. For buff food, I suggest the Witch Mother's Potent Brew as a good all-rounder. The slightly better but a lot more expensive upgrade to it is the Clockwork Citrus Fillet. But depending on the situation, I like to use blue food, which gives me a lot of magicka and health as well, when I don't need the extra regeneration. You will find all these foods at almost every guild trader if you cannot craft them yourselves yet. Potion-wise, while not being max CP, you can use every magicka potion you find in the open world. Later, if you want to optimize it, use the essence of spell power or what I like to do a lot of times is using tripods. Those restore all three attributes. Remember to level your own alchemy skill line since there is an important passive that will increase the duration of your potion effects so you can keep it always active and there is no downtime when using the potions on cooldown. You should put all attribute points into magicka or place a small amount of it into health if it makes you feel a little bit safer. Personally, I like to play with around 16 or 17k health. The stats that your healing scales with are max magicka and spell power. The more, the higher your healing output. For magicka recovery, my personal comfort zone is around 2.2k, but I always fit it to the situation. In trash fights with a lot of small minion adds where I have to reapply my skills more often, I like to play with a little more recovery and in some fights where I feel very comfortable, for example in veteran Clouder's hard mode, I even go down as low as 1.5k recovery so I can invest more into other stats. You always want to min-max, find your own comfort zones and play around until you feel safe. 
for Mundestone, I switch between Etro and Ritual depending on the situation. For beginners, I would suggest the Etro for more magical recovery. I will now blend in a chart that I made that you can use for champion point distribution. This is some sort of all-around basic distribution that will prepare you for every common situation. But keep in mind that in the end game, if you want to heal veteran trials, you should actually change your red CP for every trial to have the highest possible damage mitigation. Feel free to pause or screenshot this graphic. Now onto gear. If possible, wear 5 pieces light armor and 1 piece of medium and 1 of heavy. This is needed to activate an undaunted passive that gives you 2% more resources per armor type you wear. Try to wear the big pieces, so that means head, body and legs and infuse with prismatic enchants and the small pieces in divine with magicka enchant. Prismatic enchants give you all three attributes and as a healer you have to block relatively often and sometimes use stamina based skills, so every additional stamina is really appreciated. At first I will show you a craftable option. Twiceborn Star and Seducer. At the start it is important to get to know your character and the healing gameplay in general and when you don't have a lot of CP to back up your sustain, resource management can be difficult. That is why I chose these sets. Seducer reduces the cost of your magicka abilities and gives you magicka recovery. With the twice born star set you can use two mundus stones and can go with atro and ritual at the same time. As a healer you should definitely use a restoration and a lightning staff. Jewelry is not so important when you just start out, so wear what you find as long as it somewhat supports your usage of magicka. Another option would be buying willpower jewels from the guild vendor if you find it on your level, of course. Willpower usually is very cheap and you could potentially farm it as well. With this setup you can go into every normal dungeon to farm the next better set options there. I will show you the options now on the screen, read everything in peace and pause the video if needed. I try not to make the video too awfully long so I will try to blend in everything in more detail on your screen than saying it. We try to always use the same basic rules. Wearing two full 5 piece sets with a resto staff on the front bar and a lightning staff on the back bar. Because the dungeon sets are all light armor, you should wear any heavy helmet and any medium shoulder with it for the resource bonus. With this setup, you can then enter your first veteran dungeons to farm your monster set. From the end boss in every dungeon, you will get a helmet of a monster set. Monster sets are two piece sets that have a very strong and unique bonus. I'm showing you all the healing options with my personal opinion on the difficulty of farming for you now. The fitting shoulders to your set are random drops from the undaunted chests in the capitals of every alliance. At every undaunted camp there are three chests. Please keep in mind to use a heavy helmet and a medium shoulder to activate the undaunted passive. And now with this setup you're able to join your first trials. Normally, you will always have a healing partner in your group since the standard group setup is 2 tanks, 2 healers and 8 DDs. If you are completely new to the trial, maybe get some help from your healing partner if they are more experienced. You will see most healers stick together and are very friendly to each other. You should communicate with them about your setups as well to not have anything twice or missing. I am showing you the current healing set meta right now. One heal is wearing a Lorimi that places a rune that grants a buff helping dealing more damage. This is a set from the trial cloud dress. This trial is very very easy on normal, even easier than a lot of dungeons. That is why you should try to farm it as soon as possible. The dungeon set spell power cure gives the group the same buff but with a much lower percentage so the uptimes are not nearly as good. And spell power cure only grants it to 6 people whereas Olorimi grants it to everyone touching the rune. That is why as soon as you can keep your hands on Olorimi you should switch out spell power cure for it or maybe even don't get it from the start and go for Olorimi. The next must have set is infallible mage also called infallible ether. With this set your heavy attacks will put a debuff on your enemies that will make them take more damage from your group. That alone is reason enough to make it a needed set in every group, but additionally the debuff makes your enemies glow pink and pink is my favorite color so you really need it. 
If you have a lot of Magicka DDs in your group, you can help them by wearing Worms Raymond because it reduces their Magicka abilities costs. But as I said, I wrote down all the most common combinations here. Just have a look at the different sets and get to know them. By the way, my personal favorite setup when healing dungeons is combining Alarmy and Infallible Ether with the monster set Night Flame. Test around and find what you personally like. And if you have any questions, always feel free to write a comment down below or contact me through our Discord server. Now that we talked so much about sets and gear, let's go to abilities. At the beginning, level all three class skill lines, the Mages and the Fighter Guild, the Undaunted, Resto and Lightning Staff, Alchemy and yeah, unfortunately the PvP skill lines as well. But as a healer it is rather easy to find a group in PvP and quickly get some alliance points by healing everybody. If you're missing skills that I will be talking about, don't panic, always just read the descriptions of the skills you can use and choose what you think would be fitting and helpful instead. On the Resto staff you want the healing springs we talked about before. For more advanced players you can switch the morph to illustrious healing. It puts out higher healing but it is more cost intensive as well. If you do not only have night blades in your group, slot combat prayer to grant your group a buff that makes them deal more damage and increases their resistances. Night blades can apply the damage buff themselves, but even during execute they usually don't reapply that buff themselves anymore, so it could be helpful anyway. The third skill is Breath of Life, you're no known oh shit here. Fourth is the Energy Orb, a skill from the Undaunted that creates a bubble that not only strongly heals everybody nearby, but also provides a really important synergy that restores magicka or stamina. Everybody counts on you to use it to help them sustain, so try to throw a few every at least let's say 10 seconds or so. The last slot is a flex spot, so you can switch this skill out according to what you like and what content you do. Something always working is the inner light from the mages guild. You don't use it, but you only have it slotted to give you more max magicka. I will list some alternatives for the flex spot later on. For ulti I would suggest the reviving barrier from PvP. You only use it in emergency situations when you need a strong shield with some extra healing. And by slotting it you can activate a passive from its skill line to grant you more magicka recovery. Alternatives to this ulti would be the shooting stars from the mages guild or the templar nova ulti or even the resto staff ulti. But why we normally don't really use the ulti of the resto staff and only the one from the lightning staff, I will explain later on. Talking about lightning staff, as your first skill I suggest the elemental blockade. It does some damage, but more importantly it keeps your weapon and chance active and puts enemies off balance. That especially helps stamina DDs because they regain more stamina from these mobs. But the blockade is not unreplaceable and if you feel like something suits the situation better, switch it up. Second are the luminous shards. These not only place the Alarimi rune very precisely if you wear that set, but they also are kind of like the orbs. They provide a synergy for getting back resources and they also do some damage. The third skill could be, for example, Elemental Drain. When playing with Magic DDs, one healer should definitely run this. This applies a debuff to enemies that gives everybody who damages them some Magicka back. Because this ability doesn't cost anything and has a rather long duration, it is easy to keep it active 100% of the time. Next I suggest the Ritual of Retribution. This is a huge healing AoE with healing over time ability that damages the enemies as well. Another important thing is that this not only cleanses a bad effect off of you when placing it, but your allies can activate a synergy that does the same for them as well. This kind of cleansing is needed in some fights. When it is a rudimentary mechanic of the fight, like for example at the twins in Vmall, you should use the efficient purge to cleanse you and your group instead. Lastly, you could use a shield if you feel like you need one. If so, I suggest the light armor ability called Absorb Magicka. This restores your magicka when taking damage with it. Now onto alternatives for your flex spots. On your resto staff you could use an additional healing over time ability like rapid regen or its other morph mutagen. 
On your lightning staff, you could use a cool skill that debuffs your enemies and helps your DDs deal more damage to them. This is called Power of the Light. This ability costs stamina though, so you cannot excessively spam it. Or you could place the Sanguine Altar to grant even more healing to your group. Play around and get to learn all the skills you could possibly use and find your own playstyle. Now, an important thing is the ultimative skill on your lightning staff. You should use the aggressive warhorns since it increases the critical damage of your group. This is a huge DPS boost. All tanks and all healers in the group should run it and alternately use it after each other. That is called a horn rotation. Speaking of rotation, a healer doesn't really have one since you need to react quickly and fitting to every situation. Try keeping an eye on all your longer running abilities, buffs and debuffs to keep them active the best you can. Heal when damage comes in and don't forget to provide synergies. Yes, it will be very hard at the beginning, but as soon as you get more experience, you will get more relaxed and will get a good routine. The most important thing is to never give up. Practice makes the best. I know, it can feel rough sometimes when somebody dies because of you or your group underperforms because of you. I think every healer can relate, but that makes us stick together, right? So if you ever feel down, share your feelings and difficulties with me or any other healer and we will try to find a solution. Because there is one to every problem. Healing can be very rewarding and satisfying when you get a little bit better at it and it feels great achieving things together with your friends. And believe me, even when they sometimes don't tell you, your DDs and tanks really appreciate your work. So never take anything personal and always try to improve. If you have any questions, please let me know. Of course, there's so many other aspects to healing, but I try to keep it simple and basic so I don't overwhelm beginners. If you like some more advanced content, I will link my healer playlist in the info card and at the end of the video. Besides that, I hope you liked the video. Take care, Blume.